Welcome back to the Relationship School Podcast. Hi. Hi. Who are you? I'm Ellen Bader. And I'm Jason Gaddis. We are back to answer listener questions here. This podcast is all about growth and development, becoming who you are through the vehicle of relationships, learning how to become a better communicator, better listener, better speaker. Better learning, person. Yeah. Bigger, better person. Learning about your past, perhaps. And uh, yeah, we, we really believe that this is uh, such a vital part of your life that if you can figure this out, then perhaps you'll be more capable of figuring out all the other challenges you're, you got yes. going on. Okay, in this episode, we've got um, some great Instagram questions. So we're just going to get right into them. Okay, uh, Shivani, I have a question. And she says, <clears throat> most times conflicts drain us of mental energy and time, even with both partners' willingness to work through it. For me, conflicts often take hours of constant talking, fighting, and finally resolving. This is especially tough when work is involved that requires preparation and clarity a job or business. How do we work through conflict in a way that doesn't impact other parts of our lives that are important for our personal growth and well-being? Mm. Okay. Should I dive yeah. in? Okay. Initial thoughts are, okay, conflict shouldn't be taking that long. That's really draining and stressful. And over when stress is ongoing, our functioning, like our higher level functioning up here that we need for resolving conflicts starts to diminish and decrease. So... When, when conflicts are going on too long and taking too much energy, we're getting worse kind of over time mm -hmm. resolving them. So that's one thing is, okay, part of the learning would be how do I get more efficient and effective yeah. in navigating conflict? And then I think this, the sec, that last question at the end was how do, how do you keep conflict from affecting other areas of your life? Yeah. I think what's happening is if, if you're feeling like you're kind of bogged down in conflict, then maybe... You're preoccupied, you're tired, maybe you don't go and exercise that afternoon because you were planning to, but now you don't feel well. So, you, you know, I don't know what that mm -hmm. means, like other areas of life where you aren't as present with your kids because you have this thing at work that's not resolved. So I think that there is a reality, too, when we have an unresolved conflict in an important relationship, it's it is it is going to bother us. Yeah, it <laughs> should. It should. I was going to say, you're saying it should bother you. That's a sign that because you need to tend to it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we want to, again, back to your book, I feel like want to get good at navigating conflict, which means developing skills and a mindset around how to, how to move efficiently and quickly through those conflicts with other people. It's not all up to us, but there's a lot we can do as an individual to make that better. Yeah. I mean, stress with other people feels really bad and yeah. it does impact our lives. Yeah. And does. so I think that's all incentive to get good at this part of your life. Yeah. Get very good at it. And it sounds like you're, you're decent at it because you're saying you get, you know, we get through it. We get to resolution, which is huge. And can you two have a goal or an aspiration to get there sooner? And do you need outside help? What, what do you need to get there faster and sooner? Um, and I, I just want to acknowledge that conflict sometimes takes weeks, right? Uh -huh. For some people, like I know someone in a six month long conflict with their partner right now, mm. it's really hard because yes. they're, they're finally addressing some stuff that hasn't been addressed. And it's like a burly undertaking, yeah. but because they have a really good foundation, they're both in it. Right. They're and both they, in it till the end. Yeah, and I think in those situations, what those what that couple is potentially doing is they're they're going into the conflict and then they're kind of figuring out a way to like leave it for like okay, this isn't resolved. This mm -hmm. is maybe a big relationship issue, and we're gonna make it good enough so that we can go on and do other things and do our lives, and then we're gonna come back and readdress it. But so there there's even ways to if mm -hmm. you have an extended conflict, leave kind of pause on it and like, I love you. I want to figure this out with you. Yeah. This is really important to me. I know we're not done. We Can, both have more to reflect on. Yeah. Let's let's come back to this in therapy next week or whatever they're doing. Yeah. And in the meantime, can we be good to each other? In the meantime, yes, exactly. So yeah. that's... So, so there, it, it is just a reality that. that in life, sometimes we're not getting there very fast yeah, it's and, and it's okay. Yeah. And as a general rule slash practice, you want to get good at getting to zero or getting back to a good place efficiently. 
Yes. Always. Um, Because I don't know about you, but I hate, dislike, can't stand the feeling of being in stress that's unresolved with someone. Mm -hmm. I really don't like it. And when the person's a distant friend, coworker, like long, like old friend that I, you know, is some past thing, family member, and they're not coming to the table, then I have my own work to do on my own to get to back to zero, like in myself, so I can kind of get on with my life. Mm -hmm. Not have this burden of a resentment hanging on, you know. So I just want to acknowledge that. That sometimes there's relationships where we aren't going to be able to kind of work yeah. all the way through with someone. Yeah. But you sound like someone, this, this listener mm-hmm. sounds like someone who's yeah, it's like got a willing you're partner. Yeah, like working with or living with and that, that stuff does need to get dealt with. And you, I would acknowledge, are someone who does not tolerate like a disruption in the connection very well. Yeah. <laughs> and some people can tolerate mm-hmm. conflict or unresolved conflict a better yeah. and can tolerate a lot of it and mm-hmm. like can live with a lot of unresolved conflict. They, it still will stress them. There are tests, physiological tests to prove that, yeah. but they are kind of disconnected from the feeling of that stress. They can, they can sort of compartmentalize and move. And they're like, I don't know. I'm just used to all this unresolved conflict. That's how I grew up maybe. Yeah. Um, so anyway, some people, you know, thank, thank goodness for the people who don't want to tolerate that as much because they help us, they help mm-hmm. us address the things that are stressing us, whether we know it or not. Yeah. Such a good question, Shivani. I just want to celebrate you too, for being willing and to getting to a good place. Mm-hmm. And I would say your goal is to get more efficient and yeah, uh, to learn can you both how. agree to that? And can you mm-hmm. both kind of double down on, okay, we're, we, we figured out how, but now we need to figure out how to do it quicker in a more collaborative way, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I just keep going. That's what I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, here's one from Kim Okay. on Instagram. Have you ever covered sexual frequency differences in a marriage? He wants it way more, all caps, because that's how he thinks of connection. And I don't want it nearly as much because he won't open up, let me in and connect on a deeper emotional level. So there is a constant struggle, lots of anger around it. Oh my gosh. I mean, if we could see a show of hands. Yeah, to, this is so common. This is such a common relationship dynamic between men and women, heterosexual couples in particular. Yeah. And well, I, <clears throat> I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess all couples, but we hear about it more perhaps from the yeah, heteronormative. It, yes. Yes. That's our lens, well, but, I think also because the way men are yeah. socialized around sex, the way women... Yeah, that's true. That's a layer. ...are socialized around sex, mm-hmm. which, again, these, these all play parts. Yeah. Um, but this dynamic is really common. Yeah, and it, it's it's really can tear a marriage apart. Yes. You know, if it's not addressed. Um, it can feel really painful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I first want to say, okay, it's normal and... Um, like this is your curriculum as a couple is how do we navigate this difference? Mm-hmm. It's like a values difference. And it's um, how do we, how do I advocate for my sexual desire while also advocating for what you need? It can't be all about me and what I need. Mm-hmm. And this is probably where you get stuck. Kim is um, he's like, I want more sex. And I'm just frustrated that you won't, you know, you're not on board with that. And then you're like, in your world, like, I'm not ready. I don't want to. I need more emotional connection. I need more mm-hmm. of an on-ramp here. Which is, both are valid. Mm-hmm. And and then, you know, there's not a, oh, hold on, let me empathize and let me actually try to get what it's like to be you. Mm-hmm. And then having gotten what it's like to be you, oh, wow, okay. Um, and this requires a lot of self-reflection and insight on, mm-hmm. both, people. on and, both people. And unfortunately, some men aren't very... Um, they have their low capacity self reflectors, mm-hmm. so they're like, "What? I'm just a guy," and, and that's really not. It's and, not that it's workable. <laughs> not gonna cut it. So guys, don't please don't just say I'm just a guy. It's one of the most dis- dismissive, um, lame cop outs. Uh, you can you can include that, like, "Hey, I'm I have this male biological sex drive that's really strong," and hmm, yours is different from mine. How do I consider your feelings here and how do I work with my desire? Yeah. Huh. How do we do that? Right? That's way more open. It's an open landscape for conversation yeah. and collaboration. Yeah, for both people to be different but work together to yeah. find a way that works for both of you because it I also start to think about, okay, well what's 
it, it might be a good conversation to have. Like, well, what role does our shared sexuality play in our relationship? Mm-hmm. Why is it important to us? Is it important to us? Why is it? What what does um, sharing our sexuality like bring to our relationship? Like, again, I think sort of the bigger view of like, why is this important to each of us, mm-hmm. to both of us? Uh, what's our ideal vision here and why like getting getting into that because in a long-term yeah. relationship it's normal for people at least at least at some point to be in really different places around their sexual interest and desire and capacity so yeah this is it's really important to talk about this over time and and to really see the bigger picture of like well what what does this part of our relationship do for us mm-hmm. because i think that if it feels like transactional yeah. Like, oh, you're just meeting this need in the moment and it doesn't really mean anything outside of that is, it's not. It's a bummer. That's not that inviting. Yeah. <laughs> but if, and if couples you, get, fall into that, you know, and they, they're that. willing to just be transactional and, if and both kind of people override. Are, again, if both people are into that, it's fine. cool. But when you start to have these differences, I think it can be really helpful to talk about, okay, what's the bigger picture? What are we, why is this important to us? How do we want this to feel? Your sexual frequency is totally up to you as a couple. That's There isn't some perfect formula, I yeah. don't think. Yeah. I think it's like, how much do we want to have sex? What do we want that to look like? Well, why is that important to us? Like, yeah. what does it do for us? There's totally. so much there. And, and each of you have something to learn here, you and your partner. Uh, the guy obviously has to learn. Like, I had to learn this. I, in my immature sexual being life, part of my life, I didn't actually get that a woman needed more of an emotional heart connection, right? I didn't even get that I needed that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that. That actually came way later. That you need that too. I need that also. That's super important And, and I'm a sensitive guy, so that's essential for me. Mm-hmm. But I that took me quite a lot of work to recognize that about myself. Yeah. But you hear a lot of, there's a lot of, I think it, it's pretty common now to hear, look, a woman needs more of an on-ramp. And for guys not to get that to me is like you're ignorant, like, and and I think probably both people need an on ramp. But if I think so, but if we're, I'm just trying to like help him understand. Like first, maybe consider her feelings and how it would help her a lot to feel connected to you and safe. Like and there's safe. a lot about and, and so what are you yeah. doing or not doing that's creating that environment that sets up a really nice sexual experience for both of you, right? And yeah, both parties can need to do this, but I'm just thinking about the guy in particular. Yeah. And then the second step for the guy down the road is to to start to get, oh, you're probably pretty sensitive too. You you actually, yeah, your your biology excuse is like, I just want to get off mm-hmm. and just have sex. And then I feel open and then I feel better and I feel more available. Yeah, that's one kind of sexual expression for you. Mm-hmm. But a, a fuller sexual expression is for you to understand, oh... What if I slowed down? Mm-hmm. What if I we went on a walk first and, and I started to learn how to be vulnerable with you and talk about my inner life with you? That might be a turn on for you. Oh, yeah. now I've got what I want here. Because yes. my wife is interested in sex with me. Right. You know? Yes. You're onto something. <laughs> well, I love hearing you talk me. about it. It's powerful to hear a man talk about it. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I did a... Instagram reel recently. And I said that like, if you want to get a woman to open up, you've got to actually like have her feel considered Mm -hmm. like a priority and like her emotions are valid and whatever she's going through is important. Mm -hmm. And that, that alone is like, it's a huge lubrication for a lot of things. A lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. And you've, you've really helped me with this (laughs) over many years. I'm dense. You, you weren't that dense to begin with, honey. Okay. Uh, So thanks. Starting off pretty at a pretty good place when we found each other. Right on. Thanks, Kim, for that. Have you ever thought of going on a relationship journey, kind of like a hero's journey, to become who you are? Have you noticed how intimate relationships push us to bring our truest selves out in the open? Well, if you want to go on a journey, our signature course, Relationship Mastery, formerly known as Deeper, is enrolling, and I want you to come check it out, okay? Here is what one of our past BIPOC scholarship recipients, Andrea, said about her experience. 
the program to me it's just like it's real you know it's some sometimes you see programs like oh we're gonna give you this and you're just gonna fix it no this is like real life which I can totally relate to I mean even the instructors are just super transparent you know and that's like they act, they don't act like they're perfect it's just like hey we all learn here and that I can appreciate it's well worth it I actually had talked to someone about it today she's like what would you change about it? I was like man nothing really it's such a different experience because it's real and it's actionable things that you can actually do it's like they give you the tools and it's like it's so well worth it I, I was like yo everybody needs to take this course I feel like every human being needs this course like this is what should have been in the school Yes, math is great, science is great, but this is this right here, this is what you need as a human being to survive and interact and relate to people. All right. Andrea had an amazing experience nine months later. She was a changed human being, eventually got married, um, wrote us this incredible testimonial, and her favorite quote was, this shit is deep. And we had a laugh about that throughout the entire training. So, Andrea, thanks again. If you want to come join us, go to relationshipschool.com forward slash relationship mastery or mastery. Okay. Here's an interesting one from Lillian. I think it's Lillian. I have a dear friend that means well, but always plays devil's advocate when I come to her with a painful experience or when I need support. She says it's because she's a Libra. Where's the line between calling your friend out on their BS and holding space for them with empathy in moments when they are experiencing pain? I like this. I love this. It's very, it's very bolder. Like, well, but I'm a Libra. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Chalking it up to my chalking Enneagram it up to my number. Enneagram number, my sign, which I love. I think that's interesting. I <clears> love <throat> knowing that stuff. But uh, yeah, I think, I mean, would you want to start first, honey? I feel like I've been starting first on each oh, one. Go ahead. I like you starting. Okay. So this is a dear friend. So this is, you guys are working something out here. So like you've started to kind of, there's, there's like an issue coming up in the friendship. Mm -hmm. And um but the other friend sounds like they're not aware of the, it. Well, she's aware of it, but she's saying, this is just how I am. Uh -huh. I'm someone who, I'm a Libra. I know what that means. Mm -hmm. I I can see the other side. I can always balance, th I always balance things out, or I'm always seeing that she likes that about herself. She values that about herself. And she thinks that that's a valuable way to support you. And at times it might be, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm guessing that it's more in timing. Like when I think about, if you're coming to her with something vulnerable emotionally, you first just want to feel like she cares. Yeah. And she is trying to understand how you feel. She's not trying to fix you. She's not trying to change how you feel. You just want to feel cared about and understood first. And usually, this is true for any important relationship, I think, parent, child, partners, friends. Once we have that, like once we feel like our friend cares about us and understands us and understands our feelings, then we're actually open to like, what do you think? Like, do mm -hmm. you have, a, is there a way I'm, is there something I'm not seeing here? Is there something, you know, then we can, we might be more open to feedback or another perspective, but we aren't, that's, it's really natural to not be open to that until you feel cared about and understood in your experience. Yes. What do you think? Amen. Everything okay. you said. Okay. Yeah. And I like, I like friendships that challenge each other. And I, I want my friends to play devil's advocate sometimes if I'm stuck in a in something. And I've learned over time that it, it feels better when I'm first seen in my emotions, my complaint, my wound, my hurt, my overwhelm, whatever's going on with me. And I, I've had to learn this the hard way as a coach therapist over many years is sometimes I come in with challenge first before validating someone's experience. And it doesn't go as well. No. Nine times out of 10, it doesn't go as well. So mm -hmm. I've had to train our coaches over time. Hey, don't do what I do sometimes, <laughs> which is uh, challenging people like yeah. hard uh, on their BS. Yeah. Um, but I, I love that your relationship can tolerate some challenge because yeah. I, I think that sounds like a real friendship. Totally. And, and this to me sounds like a real friendship that you could talk about the dynamic. Yeah. So this is the last thing I wanted to say to you, uh, Lillian, is, which is like, hey, hey, friend, um, can I talk about something that's been upsetting to me? Are you open to a conversation about our dynamic? Mm -hmm. It sounds like they have talked about it. Yeah. And I, and so it's you, Hey, you play devil's advocate and it's like, cool. I, I appreciate that you challenge me here. And, um, I want this first. Yeah. And that's like, kind of the thing. Yeah. I, was talking say, about. I like that too. I, I want your perspective eventually, but mm -hmm. first I just want to be able to like be seen and how I feel and 
feel like you care about how I feel and you understand my experience. That this is true for this is we can work with this with people constantly yeah. because we want to move fast, we want to get over the vulnerable feelings, and so we all tend to rush to fixing or problem solving or well you should or advice and mm-hmm. instead of just oh my gosh you're you're so sad I really see that or you feel really hurt and confused that makes sense because you know just validating and hanging out for even a few minutes yeah sometimes is enough to yeah for things to start to move that's right but say something sooner than later otherwise you're going to build a resentment here yeah and then it's going to get worse and then you're going to blow up someday yeah. so yeah, and, and and maybe see if this is what you want to bring to your friendship with her, too. I, I don't know if it's two women, but, um, yeah, she. Okay. So, you know, you could handle her, and maybe you're handling her in this way of kind of empathy first, understanding and care first, and then and then offering your perspective or your ideas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could both do that and see what that's like. Cool. Yeah, and I, I think I, I just want to continue to say yes to your friendship here and to yeah. friendships where we challenge and support yeah, each other. Yeah. And we, and we and work be... on how we want to be supported and handled. And mm-hmm. that's, that's a, that's a great conversation. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Let's pause there. Okay. Thanks honey for coming on and answering some questions. Thanks Instagram followers. And we'll, we'll probably jump back into our Facebook community soon with more of your Facebook group questions. Yeah. You always, y'all always bring awesome such questions. Good, such good insight and desire to learn and understand. We love that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. As you know, I've dedicated my life to helping people with their relationships, right? I want to solve this problem so that all of you can work through your differences and have fulfilling, amazing, badass partnerships and relationships, family, coworkers, friends, whoever. And I have trained a ton of relationship coaches, almost a hundred certified relationship coaches to help you specifically work through your relationship challenges. So I want to invite you to a special deal we're offering to the podcast listener where you can get 50% off your first month of coaching with one of our amazing relationship coaches. Okay. If you're tired of therapy, it feels like that's going around in circle, or you want to actually set goals and accomplish your relationship goals, hire a relationship coach. Okay. Go to relationshipschool.com forward slash get coaching now, and then use the coupon code first 50 to get the 50% deal off your first month of relationship coaching. Super psyched to have our amazing coaches serve you and help you get to the next level. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Share one of these videos with a friend. We want to help the planet get their act together around relationships. And you are one of them, so thank you.